Today we're going to be learning a super cool yet slightly technical skill that is going to help you make your Tonex tone models actually sound and respond a little bit closer to the real amplifiers they were modeled after. Now as usual before we begin I need to introduce you to this amazing sponsor of this video and it is Ozzy Osbourne showing how much sugar he likes in his morning coffee. Now, in the presence of the Prince of Darkness I need to tell you about my new website and I'm coming closer to the camera. My new website, Slightly Technical Academy, which you can find at slightlytechnicalacademy.com. It is a place where I share knowledge and registration is for free and you can get some free tone X packs and a lot of great stuff is coming up. So come on in. It's a good place. All right. And smash that subscribe button if you like the stuff happening on this channel. Thanks, guys. Now let's move on with the topic. <laughs> So before I get into the solution, I need to tell you about the problem. The problem is one that I actually spoke about in my other video about Tonexes, is that the tone models are actually modeled after an amplifier and they're basically only a snapshot of the amplifier at certain settings. Now the Tonex app has an equalizer, but that equalizer actually sounds nothing like the tone stack in our amplifiers. So what we're going to do now, we're actually going to explore how the tone stack functions and then we're going to try and mimic that in the Tonex app. The first thing that I need to introduce you to is a free software called the Duncan Tone Stack Calculator. Now the Tone Stack Calculator shows us how different tone stacks in different amplifiers function. Take a look at this. So this is the Duncan's Tone Stack Calculator and we are looking at the typical Marshall Tone Stack. Now right off the bat you can note one thing. Even when your controls are flat there is an EQ curve and this means that these tone stacks always color the sound. Basically, I'll tell you from experience, tone stacks are crucial in determining how the mid-range will sound in an amplifier. Now, next thing to note is that there is always a center frequency in the valleys, for example here where you can see a slight mid-scoop or for example in the peaks where you see here the bass peaking. Now, this is very important because if you move the treble control, you will see that these center points are sort of moving. That's really important to understand now. Now I'm going to fire up the Tone X app and I'm going to show you an example. So I selected the Tone model from my collection. This one is actually free on the website and it's like a typical boosted Marshall JMP thing. And I'm purposely using a different impulse response. So it sort of forces me to use the equalizer on the Tone model. Take a listen to this. <laughs> All right, so it's sort of like mid-range. It doesn't really fit this impulse response. Now, what I want to do, I want to play around with the equalizer. Now, the Tonex application offers us a lot of things with this equalizer, but there are some things that are sort of confusing to people. So take a look at this. If we, for example, compare the tone stack calculator and we take a note that we want to lose some mids and maybe increase the bass a little bit, we're going to keep the treble at five. So take a look at this. We increase the bass, we lose some mids, and we can sort of look at where is the center frequency of this EQ curve. And it's going to be somewhere around 750 hertz. And for the bass frequencies, you will see if you move the bass around, it is mostly going to be growing around 120 hertz. Now we are not going to be getting into the Q of the filters, we're not going to overcomplicate it. We're just doing like approximations that can go a long way. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to lose some mids here and I'm going to select 750. And I'm also going to increase the bass, but I'm going to select, well, let's say 120. Let's take a listen. <laughs> All right, so that's example number one. So if we, for example, decide to take a different type of amplifier and I'm gonna choose a tone model from my Mesa Boogie Rectifier pack, which I modded. It's actually this amplifier behind me, my favorite Mesa Boogie Rectifier. So, and we're gonna choose a boosted 
uh, tone model. And in score, it sounds like this. So what can I do with this song? Let's say we want to do some scoopage again. Now the problem that we have is that the tone stack calculator actually doesn't have a Mesa Boogie rectifier over here. If we look around, we're gonna find some famous equalizers, but there is no Mesa Boogie rectifier. So this is a little bit advanced, but for people who like to tinker with this stuff, you can actually find a rectifier schematic on the internet and you will soon realize that it looks pretty much just like the Marshall. I just need to change two components. And I know from the top of my head that the 470 Pico will go for a 680 for the third channel and the 33 kilo ohm resistor will be changed for a 47 kilo ohm and we got rectifier EQ curve. Now what we want to do, we want to increase the bass a little bit, we're gonna kill some mids and maybe we want to increase the treble a little bit. If we take a note of the center frequencies, we're talking about the 450 hertz for the mid frequencies and the bass is sort of moving lower than 100 hertz. By the way, I don't want to get over complicated with the treble frequencies. It might be a topic for a separate video, but let's say that we are going to use the stock treble frequency selection in the Tonex app. So we are going for a 450 scoop and we're gonna go for an increase in bass at around, yeah, let's say 90. Let's say around 100. <laughs> Before I give you the last step, please smash that like button if you find this stuff interesting and subscribe to the channel. And you can find all these Tonex packs on my website and currently they're going for $15, all the premium packs, over 20 packs. That's crazy, right? Now the purpose of this video was to offer you a different approach. You don't have to do it this way. You can select whichever frequency you want, but the whole idea was to show you how technically you can come to the right frequencies that you sort of need to select to get the authentic sound of the tone models that you're playing. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.